Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will go through each topic on the ASCP lecture list. Today's video will cover platelet production, structure, and function, including a discussion on megakaryocytopoiesis. Megakaryocytopoiesis Platelets are non-nucleated blood cells that circulate in the range of 150 to 400 billion per liter, with slightly higher average counts in women and slightly lower in both sexes over 65 years old. They initiate primary hemostasis which means stopping of bleeding when exposed to collagen or inflammatory proteins in the event of a blood vessel injury. Platelets are seen in a blood film as 2.5 mm in diameter and have an average volume of 8 to 10 femtoliter, with a granular structure that cannot be seen under light microscopy. They come from bone marrow cells called megakaryocytes, which are large, multilobulated, and have multiple chromosome copies. In a right-stained bone marrow aspirate smear, each megakaryocyte is 30 to 50 mm in diameter with abundant granular cytoplasm, accounting for less than 0.5% of all bone marrow cells. Megakaryocytes cluster with hematopoietic stem cells under the influence of cytokines, and differentiate under the influence of growth factor thrombopoietin, from megakaryocyte progenitors that are recruited from common myeloid progenitors and subsequently differentiate through several maturation stages. Releasing platelets into the circulation via proplatelet processes which are projections that resemble strings of beads, through or between the endothelial cells and into the venous sinuses, releasing platelets from the tips of the processes into the circulation. Megakaryocytes are also found in the lungs. Megakaryocyte differentiation and progenitors Megakaryocyte development is controlled by two transcription gene products, GATA1 and MYB. GATA1, regulated by cofactor FOG1, drives megakaryocyte development from the common myeloid progenitor, while MYB suppresses it. The result is a balance between megakaryocytopoiesis and erythropoiesis. There are three stages of megakaryocyte progenitor development, defined by colony formation in vitro, burst forming unit, colony forming unit, and light density colony forming unit megakaryocyte. All three resemble lymphocytes and have varying abilities to form colonies and divide. The light-density colony-forming unit megakaryocyte has lost its ability to divide but has unique cytoplasmic maturation through endomitosis. Endomitosis Endomitosis is a type of cell division that lacks the final stages of mitosis, telophase and cytokinesis, that leads to separation into daughter cells. The transcription factor RUNX1 mediates this switch from mitosis to endomitosis, by suppressing the rho slash rock signaling pathway which normally triggers the separation of daughter cells. This results in insufficient actin and myosin to cause division, leading to DNA replication and the production of ploidy with multiple sets of chromosomes. Subsequently, under the influence of yet another transcription factor, NFE2, DNA replication proceeds to the production of 8N, 16N, or even 32N ploidy with duplicated chromosome sets. In megakaryocytes, this results in many DNA copies that are used to produce abundant cytoplasm and platelets. A single megakaryocyte can release 2,000 to 4,000 platelets, with a total platelet production of 10 per day and a total turnover rate of 8 to 9 days, in a healthy human. In conditions of high platelet consumption, production can increase up to 10 times. Terminal megakaryocyte differentiation As endomitosis progresses, megakaryocyte progenitors transition from the proliferative phase to terminal differentiation, a series of stages during which their unique morphological features can be seen under a microscope in bone marrow samples. The earliest stage, the MK1 or megakaryoblast, has started developing as plasma membrane blebs, blunt projections from the margin that resemble platelets and its cytoplasmic structure, including procoagulant laden alpha granules, dense granules, and the demarcation system. The demarcation system is a series of channels that divide the cytoplasm into separate units, 
which will eventually form individual platelets. During the MK2 stage or promegakaryocyte, the nucleus of the cell becomes more indented and identifiable, reaching full ploidy by the end of this stage. The fully matured MK3 stage megakaryocyte is large and easily recognizable under a microscope, with a lobulated nucleus and cytoplasm that is granular and platelet-like in appearance the chromatin is variably condensed with light and dark patches. The cytoplasm is azurophilic lavender, granular, and platelet-like because of the spread of the demarcation system and alpha granules. At full maturation, platelet shedding, or thrombocytopoiesis, proceeds. Ploidy levels can be measured using flow cytometry if needed. The final stage is platelet shedding or thrombocytopoiesis. Megakaryocyte membrane receptors and markers. Scientists and technicians in specialty and tertiary care laboratories use various techniques, such as immunostaining, flow cytometry with immunologic probes, and fluorescent in situ hybridization, fish, with genetic probes, to identify megakaryocyte progenitors in hematologic diseases. To do this, they use several flow cytometric markers on the megakaryocyte membrane, such as MPL the thrombopoietin receptor present at all stages of maturation and CD34 a stem cell and common myeloid progenitor marker. CD34 disappears as differentiation progresses in other markers, such as CD41, CD36, CD42, CD61, and CD62, become visible. Additionally, Fully developed megakaryocytes may show cytoplasmic markers, such as coagulation factor 8, von Willebrand factor, and fibrinogen, through immunostaining. Thrombocytopoiesis The process of producing platelets cannot be observed by examining megakaryocytes in a bone marrow biopsy. However, in megakaryocyte cultures viewed under a transmission electron microscope, dilated the demarcation system, longitudinal bundles of tubules, proplatelet processes, and transverse constrictions can be seen. It is believed that these processes extend into the venous blood in the bone marrow, leading to the release of platelets. The process leaves behind naked megakaryocyte nuclei, which are then consumed by marrow macrophages. Hormones and Cytokines of Megakaryocytopoiesis the hormone thrombopoietin, with its 23% homology with the red blood cell producing hormone erythropoietin, is a growth factor involved in the production of platelets. Messenger ribonucleic acid mRNA for thrombopoietin has been found in the kidney, stromal cells, and smooth muscle cells, but it is primarily produced in the liver and binds to the megakaryocyte and platelet receptor protein MPL. The concentration of thrombopoietin in the plasma is inversely proportional to the platelet and megakaryocyte mass, suggesting that it is the primary mechanism controlling platelet count. Thrombopoietin, in combination with other cytokines, induces stem cells to differentiate into megakaryocyte progenitors and stimulates the differentiation, proliferation, and maturation of megakaryocytes, leading to the release of platelets. Synthetic thrombopoietin mimetics can increase the platelet count in patients with cancer and other diseases. Other cytokines that play a role in megakaryocytopoiesis include interleukin-3, interleukin-6, and interleukin-11, with interleukin-3 promoting early differentiation and interleukin-6 and interleukin-11 enhancing later processes. The cytokine aprelvacin, which is a mimetic of interleukin-11, can stimulate platelet production in patients with chemotherapy-induced thrombocytopenia. Other cytokines and hormones, such as stem cell factor, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, and acetylcholinesterase-derived megakaryocyte growth stimulating peptide, also contribute to the process. Inhibitors of megakaryocytopoiesis include PF4, B thromboglobulin, interleukin-8, and others. The reduction of certain transcription factors, such as FOG1, GATA1, and NFE2, can decrease megakaryocytopoiesis at various stages. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate notifications to get our new videos, 
If you like our content please press the like button, and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions leave a comment below. Platelets Platelets are small, circular to irregular shaped cells that circulate in the blood. They lack a nucleus but have a granular cytoplasm and a membrane. The average diameter of platelets in a peripheral blood film is 2.5 mm, and their volume, as measured by a clinical profiling instrument, ranges from 8 to 10 femtoliter. Circulating platelets are biconvex and have a smooth surface, allowing them to flow smoothly through blood vessels. They tend to cluster with red blood cells near the center of the blood vessel. On a right stained wedge preparation blood film, platelets appear circular to irregular, lavender, and granular, although their small size makes them hard to examine for internal structure. The normal peripheral blood platelet count is 150 to 400 billion per liter. This count only represents two thirds of available platelets, with the spleen sequestering an additional one third. During times of need, such as injury or inflammation, Platelets become sticky, extend pseudopods, and aggregate with each other. Reticulated platelets, also known as stress platelets, are larger than ordinary platelets and may be associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. They are thought to arise from early and rapid proplatelet extension and release and can be quantitatively evaluated through nucleic acid dyes such as thiazole orange, which bind to the RNA of the endoplasmic reticulum. However, the presence of platelet-dense granules may interfere with this measurement, falsely increasing the reticulated platelet count. Platelet granules, alpha granules, dense granules, and lysosomes. Platelets have 50 to 80 alpha granules and 2 to 7 dense granules. Alpha granules contain proteins, some of which are membrane-bound and some of which are endocytosed or synthesized within the megakaryocyte. Upon activation, alpha granule membranes fuse with the surface connected canalicular system and release their contents into the microenvironment for platelet adhesion and aggregation, and plasma coagulation. Dense granules, also called dense bodies, appear later in megakaryocyte differentiation and stain opaque when treated with osmium. They store small molecules and release their contents directly into the plasma upon platelet activation. The membranes of dense granules support the same integral proteins as the alpha granules, suggesting a common source. Platelets have a few lysosomes, similar to those in neutrophils, that digest vessel wall matrix components during in vivo aggregation and may also digest autophagic debris. Platelet activation Platelet activation involves adhesion, aggregation, and secretion. Platelets bind elements of the vascular matrix through sheer force, involving a sequence of events involving collagen, tissue factor, phospholipid, von Willebrand factor, and platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecules. Injury to blood vessel walls disrupts collagen and releases von Willebrand factor, which binds to platelets and triggers internal activation pathways. Von Willebrand factor and collagen interaction cause platelets to become firmly attached to the damaged surface and spread. TXA2 and ADP are secreted from platelets and activate neighboring platelets, promoting platelet aggregation. Platelet aggregation involves the production of thrombin, the assembly of integrin AIB3, P selectin deployment, and phospholipid flip. Platelet aggregation is a key part of primary hemostasis but can lead to arterial thrombotic events if inappropriate platelet activation occurs. Platelet activation pathways G proteins control cellular activation at the inner membrane surface in all cells. G protein activation is triggered by membrane receptor ligand binding, leading to the release of guanosine diphosphate and replacement with deoxyguanosine triphosphate. The eicosanoid synthesis pathway is triggered by G protein activation and involves the release of arachidonic acid and its conversion to TXA2. TXA2 increases cytoplasmic calcium levels, leading to platelet activation. The cyclooxygenase pathway in endothelial cells results in the production of prostacyclin, which suppresses platelet activation. 
TXA2 has a short half-life and is reduced to thromboxane B2, a stable plasma metabolite. Thromboxane B2 is acted on by liver enzymes to produce soluble urine metabolites. Thank you for completing the video, remember to ask for ASCP short notes, and don't forget to subscribe, bye.